Shalom, 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 brothers and sisters. This is your brother Kazak Yah. And I'm going to do a response to a video that was shared with me by uh, my friend and brother, partner in the ministry, Moria Josiah Israel. And I always do responses to videos whenever somebody throws us out there, you know, puts us under the bus. So this video is entitled 10 things to know before engaging Hebrew Israelites. And this is a pastor uh, who happens to be in Orlando, Florida. So let's let him talk. And I'm going to, to give my feedback on his points of interest that he makes. And we're talking about in this particular session, 10 things to study before engaging black Hebrew Israelite, or you could say Hebrew Israelism. So he did, the, he did the first thing he did was, he did the thing that most people that are, are going to try to debunk a truth that we put out is by giving us a label. We don't call ourselves black Hebrew Israelites, okay? So that's my first point with regards to his comment. We are, Hebrews who happen to be Israelites, whether it be we, whether it be us being a physical DNA, some of us believe that we are, um, and or whether it just be someone that has actually came under the bonds of the covenant of Israel, which would make uh, those that married into the family an Israelite by family reunion. Okay, let's continue. Number one. Do you know how and why Christ fulfilled the law? So he says Christ fulfilled the law, but the Messiah specifically stated, think not that I am come to destroy the law. So since he's saying, don't think I came to destroy the law, right? I didn't come to destroy the law, okay? The word for destroy, in the Greek text is kataluo. And kataluo means to dissolve. To dissolve, okay? To, it says, the Strong's definition says to loosen down, that is to demolish, okay? Literally or figuratively, to demolish, okay? To halt. Okay, so the Messiah is saying in the Greek text, brother pastor, I didn't come to halt, to bring it to an end, but to fulfill. So the word for fulfill is plero or pleru, okay, which it means to make replete, to cram level up, furnish, imbue, and diffuse, influence, satisfy, right? Let's go to Luke 24 and 44, Luke 24 and 44. And he said to them, these are the words which I spoke unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moshe, and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. So, what did he fulfill? He fulfilled the things that were in the law, in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning him. Okay, so in other words, he satisfied. So what, it, what was Yahshua saying in Matthew 5 and 17? I didn't come to end to put it in to halt the law, I simply came to satisfy all of the things that was spoken concerning me, whether it was in the law, whether it was in the, um, the prophets, whether it was in, it was, it was, whether it was in the Psalms, he says, in the Psalms, law, prophets, and Psalms. So the Messiah came to fulfill the things that were in the law, prophets, and the Psalms. The Messiah said that 
He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. If the law was ended, he would told him, you don't have to keep my commandments because all you got to do is just believe in me and the commandments are fulfilled. He didn't say that, right? He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. The main thing that you have to understand as a believer in Jesus Christ is that we are not justified by the law. If you sum it up, you go down and read the whole thing. It's basically telling you the sacrifices could not justify the flesh. So if you read down in Romans, for the sake of time, I'm not going to read all the way down. But if you read down, that's what he's talking about. Because how do we know that? Because the second verse, when he says, he says, what, what advantage have the Yahudim? He said, much every way. In other words, they do have the advantage. Because why? Because it was committed unto them, the oracles of Yah. So he said, for what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of Yah without effect? Okay. So when you go down to verse 20, therefore by the deeds of the law, shall, there shall be no flesh justified. Okay. Why? Because the law was a penalty. And when I, when I talk about the law, we're not talking about the commandments. We're talking about the judgments of sacrifices. Hebrews 9, 13. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctify to the purifying of the flesh, right? How much more, okay? The blood of the Messiah, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot unto Elohim, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living Elohim. So that's what he's talking about. You're not justified by the sacrificial lambs for the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of things can never with those sacrifices brother preacher which they offered year by year continually make the comers there unto perfect <laughs> you can't get no more detail than that, brothers and sisters. For then would they not have ceased to be offered because the worshippers once purged should have had no more consciousness of sins. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. See that? Now, for it is is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore he cometh into the world, he saith, sacrifices and offerings thou would not, but a body hast thou prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast had no pleasure you see that so in other words the law is good paul alludes to that in romans but the most side in hebrews says it clear that it was it wasn't the blood of bulls and goats that he wanted so we're going to read two places psalms 34 and 17 and 18 psalms 34 psalms 34 verse 17 and 18 the righteous, the righteous cry, and Yah hear and delivers them out of their troubles. Yah is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and save such as of a contrite spirit. Okay. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but Yah delivers them out of them all. Now, let's tie it with Psalms 51, right? Dawid said this. 
kid, we know, everybody know this part. We says, verse 7, this is Psalm 51, verse 7 says, Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. So that's what he's saying, right? Now, let's go down. Verse 17. Let's go down to verse uh, 14, because 14 makes it even clearer. Dawi says what? Now, nah, let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. Okay, verse 8 says, Make me hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities, right? Create in me a clean heart, O Yah, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast not away from thy presence. Take not thy spirit from me. Restore unto me joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then I will teach transgressors. Now, why are you going to teach transgressors if there's nothing for you to have a measuring stick to? See, the law is the measuring stick of righteousness. But not the law of animal sacrifices, but the law, the moral law. Okay. Not the ceremonial law as pertaining to bloods and bulls and goats. And we're going to see that here clearly. Okay. So now he says, then I will teach transgressions thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltness. That's what he's saying. I'm tired of offering sacrifices. I, I want to be able to just walk in righteousness. So he says, deliver me from blood guiltness, O Yah, thou Yah of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Yah, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desirest not the sacrifices, else I would give it. Thou desires not burnt offerings. <laughs> the sacrifices of Yah are a broken spirit and a broken and a contrite heart, O Yah, thou wilt not despise. Because that he's saying, Dawid is saying the Most High wants a broken and a contrite spirit. He don't want the animal, the sacrifices of the blood, the pure innocent animal being slain because you wicked and don't want to obey the Most High. He wants a heart that is broken and contrite, that's willing to submit to his laws. And the laws are given for us to have a proper relationship with him and to have a proper relationship with his creation. So he says, for thou desires not sacrifice, verse 16. This is Psalm 51, 16. A broken and a contrite heart, O Yah, thou would not despise. Do good in thy pleasure unto Zion. Build thy walls, O Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with sacrifices of righteousness and with burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar see so that's the key the key is the animals wasn't supposed to take the place of you living righteous thus we have the saying by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified that's what that means second thing that we need to study in order for us to engage black hebrew israelites is do you know how we received and translate the Bible. Do you have a general knowledge on how we received 66 books? Do you have a general knowledge on how the church throughout history decided that we would have 39 Old Testament books and 27 New Testament books? Do you know how you received that leather-bound book in your lap? <laughs> you got the Catholic Bible that does, has more than 66 books. So, in other words, he don't, basically, he wants to discredit books like Maccabees and stuff like that, but they were in the 1611. Do yourself a favor, right? Go on Google search and type in 1611 King James Version. You'll find those other books in there. And so that adds the total up to, I think, 73, I think, 
so 66 but you got other books that was in the 1611 so when the king j authorized the original writings uh it was more than 66. now after he died um the powers that be the roman catholicism and the protestants they got together and had a council and determined that they were going to take those other books out <laughs> and give you 66. So the past is talking about we need to study and learn how we got the 66 books. Now, stop and think for a moment. You mean to tell me you believe that nobody else wrote any other books but just 66? That's all the books out of all of the, the, hist the hist historical uh, years of creation and then then to the formation of the of the the Abraham nation and then the Israelite nation that only 66 books are accredited you want me to believe that only 66 books of all those years in history are credited but yet you want me to go to to a bookstore and or a book that you said that I need to get this book <laughs> that's what that's what I call crazy you want to discredit the books written by those because these so-called uh, council got together and said that these books are not inspired but yet you're going to read somebody else's book suspect brother he said the church decided who gave the church the authority to decide what is scripture and what is not scripture? The church didn't, wasn't given that authority. All right. Christians should know how we receive the Bible and how we translated it in modern day language. This is why many in the black Hebrew Israelite camps believe that the King James Version is the only authentic version while also affirming the Apocrypha. A Christian should be able to articulate the formation, reception, and finally the preservation of the biblical text and be able to understand how we have this word, the biblical canon. So now just using his just using what he just said. If all scripture is given, then how did the church have the authority to say what is authentic and what is not? So you should let the reader determine whether or not is is right or not. Not let um, the so-called church fathers determine what they what they deem as being legit or not. You just said it yourself, brother. You said it yourself. You said all scripture, right? But yeah, you want to take out the ones that you don't agree with. <laughs> you should leave them in there. You should leave them in there and let, and let, uh, let the people read it, determine whether or not it's authentic or not. Okay. Next. Great book for you to read to understand this is From God to Us by Norman Geisler. This is an excellent survey that tells us how we received the Bible. Now, bear in mind, Norman Geisler uh, is not someone who lived during the first century. <laughs> So there are other books and writings that they took out that the first century believers is called the Didache. Okay, so many of those books were taken out. Uh, I should say they weren't included in a canonization but there are other books, there are scrolls that they're written, that they found in, in caves, etc. Dead Sea Scrolls. Not only did they find Dead Sea Scrolls, but there are other books that the other, other nations of Israelites that scattered took with them. For example, you got the Book of Enoch. 
the Ethiopians had that. Okay, um, the Book of Jasher, right? Uh, Book of Jasher is mentioned in is mentioned in the scriptures. Do do a Google search and ask the question: Where is the Book of Jasher mentioned in the Bible? And you'll see it's in there. Okay.